நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த சேமோ வீடியோ ஆஃப் அவர் ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி The link of the original version, that is, the Chamu video is given in the description box of this video. This is Astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Chamu video. In this video, we are going to check few natal charts where you can see the combination of Venus and Jupiter and natal charts of those for whom marriage is denied. I have chosen in such a way that each natal chart is unique and in its own way this is the natal chart of a female who is in her 40s the basic theory is when a person is not having the fortune of getting a child the marriage is delayed it is not possible to get married we should understand what will be the subsequent effect of an event and based on this you have to make predictions You can call this as chaos theory. Chaos theory is a study of apparently unpredictable behavior in systems governed by deterministic laws. We call it as butterfly effect. This is the idea like that trivial things can have big impacts on a system. The concept is imagined with the butterfly flapping its wings that causes tsunami. If you definitely learn chaos theory, you can understand astrology also. Life is like a domino builder effect. I hope you would have come across domino art where one chord or a block is tapped, it will push consequently all the other in series. and it will have some big effect eventually it can bring out a beautiful art or the final energy can push a big object with great force the same way in the similar fashion an event that happens in the present in our life has an effect on another event that will happen in the future Since our birth, everything happens according to our karma. Nothing happens by chance. Meeting a person or loving a person, whatever it is, does not happen by chance. Everything happens because of your good karma or bad karma. Every event in your life is predestined. Having said this, every event has an effect in the future. This is the natal chart of a female who is in her 40s but she is still unmarried I would like to know the reasons why marriage is still denied to her well many of my students are telling the answers I'm really happy to hear the answers from my students mm, one of my students says that she is highly inclined in spiritualism and that is the reason she did not get married No, I don't see such a planetary position in her natal chart. Well, if one has to be spiritually inclined, there must be connection of ascendant to the planets such as Jupiter, Saturn and Ketu. Or Rashi should be in connection with Jupiter, Saturn and Ketu. I was wondering why you told this point. No such a connection does not exist in this natal chart don't consider that when merely jupiter and ketu is in connection a person will be spiritually inclined when jupiter and ketu are in conjunction one will be craving for the money job salary of course in this natal chart jupiter and ketu are in conjunction and saturn is aspecting this conjunction by its 10th aspect but these three planets are not in connection with ascendant or rashi let us not get diverted now towards this topic please remember the point i said when the three planets 
such as Jupiter, Ketu and Saturn or connected with ascendant or Rashi, then the person will be very much inclined towards true spiritualism. It will not be fake. This female did not marry. Well, now you can start your predictions. Why she did not marry it? Well, my students are telling me the answers. All the points that my students told are correct. And I can tell you certain points beyond these. But the predictions made by you guys are commendable. Well, let me repeat the points that my students just now said. The Lord of 7th house is in 6-8 axis to the 7th house. In other words, Mars, which is the Lord of the 7th house, is residing in Gemini house and as per Bhavad Bhavam, it is in the 8th house to the 7th house. And another student got a valid prediction that Mars is residing in the 2nd house. This is more closer to the reason for the delay in marriage. Always take Bhavad Bhavam predictions at the second or third level of importance. You can very well see Mars in the second house to the ascendant and to the seventh house of the Rashi. Saturn resides. Here the seventh house to the Rashi also got affected. Venus is in Nishbala in this natal chart which is very very important. Somebody asked about the concept of Nishbala in my class. Nishbala is a status where the planet totally loses its directional strength. There is one more concept in astrology which is important, which is Sunyabala. Kalidas has mentioned in his book about this concept of Sunyabala. There is a lot of significance regarding these terms Nishbala and Sunyabala. The great Kalidas, the poet, says if a planet which is exalted is in conjunction with debilitated planet, then the exalted planet attains Sunyabala. He just says in one line, if a exalted planet is in conjunction with debilitated planet, then the exalted planet gets Sunyabala. Let me explain this concept further. The great sages who had great drishti passed their knowledge through their disciples by manuscripts or verbal form. Those teachings were preserved in form of palm leaf manuscripts could have spoiled by termites. We have to definitely give importance to the period where they wrote their teachings in palm leaf manuscripts. It was not possible to explain everything in detail as it was in verbal form or were just written in palm leaf manuscripts. I am taking this session as a lengthy one and you all have come to this place and you are listening to this session which will be recorded and published later. But there was no such facility in olden days. So in those days the knowledge itself was preserved in a brief way, when an exalted planet is in conjunction with debilitated planet, the exalted planet's strength is predicted as Sunyavala. The exalted planet loses its energy completely. There are thousands of interpretations for these concepts. When Venus resides in the quadrant, it is sort of strength. In this natal chart, though Venus seems to reside in a quadrant, it attains Nishbala, that is, it has lost Digbala directional strength. I have already written a rule that says when a Bhava is connected with Saturn or Mars or Rahu or together with these planets, the Bhava is destroyed. You can very well see in this natal chart Saturn aspects 5th house by its 3rd aspect and Mars aspects the 5th house by its 4th aspect. What is the strength of the Lord of the 5th house which is Mercury? It is of course a Nietzsche Bunga status but it is not 
a direct way of cancellation of debility. I have already listed 10 to 11 rules for Nietzsche Bhanga. There are 10 to 11 rules about Nietzsche Bhanga status spread across in the original dictum. The great sages had told about this Nietzsche Bhanga and I have collected all those and I have written in this in my article Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga. This is the simple service that a crazy man like me serve you. People who are crazy of astrology like me, we collect everything, whatever we have studied and share it with you guys in a nutshell. So it is an easy job for you. Whatever I have studied, I have learned, I have tested practically was shared by me. I am sharing the knowledge which was acquired by testing many natal charts and I am sharing a collective knowledge with you guys. I have written articles explaining the concepts. In order to know this concept, you are supposed to go through the entire book that is the original dictum. You have to collect a lot of details from the entire book whereas being an astrologer, being a teacher, I have collected everything and giving it to you in a nutshell. This is the reason I'm conducting the classes for you. So the fifth thousand year is connected with the worst malefics which has got no subatwa. The second point is if the very same malefic planet have got subatwa, the prediction will be completely different. My students are telling some responses. So I will go to the next level of predictions. Sir, please don't bring the point that Rashi Lord Saturn is aspecting the Rashi. It's a different subject. I will definitely explain the concept about Rashi Lord aspecting Rashi in another session. I will definitely make a note of this and I will publish the video later regarding this. We will see this concept later. In this natal chart, there is Parivartan of Saturn and Moon. What purpose will this Parivartan of Saturn and Moon serve? Will it be useful for progeny? As per Bhavad Bhavam, Moon is Marakatipadi and Moon should not be strong in this natal chart. Who are the dead enemies for the natal of Taurus Ascendant? Sun and the Moon are the dead enemies for the native of Taurus Ascendant. What do you understand when I ask you question who are dead enemies for the native of Taurus Ascendant? Who is the Ascendant Lord? Venus is the Lord of the Taurus. And the declared enemies for the Venus are Sun and Moon. One of my students is saying Jupiter. No, Jupiter is not the right answer. Please don't make this mistake. Jupiter is not a declared enemy to Venus. Jupiter and Venus have contrasting characters, but they are not enemies. Whereas Venus treats Sun and Moon as dead enemies, and Sun and Moon treat Venus as their enemy. In astrology, every term has a deep meaning. Even by chance, I will not use irrelevant term. I will use the term like Jupiter and Venus or the planets that have contrasting characters or enemies, but I never address them as declared enemies. The declared enemies of Venus are Sun and Moon. For the native of Taurus Ascendant, if Moon gets debilitated, it is good in a way. In a natal chart, Marakadibadi should not become strong. Mars resides in the second house to the ascendant and it aspects the fifth house and Saturn is in the third house in Cancer and it aspects the fifth house by its third aspect. And nobody had mentioned one important point so far for the delay of marriage. Jupiter, which is the natural significator of progeny, is in 12th house to the ascendant and more importantly, 
Jupiter is also in conjunction with Ra. When you are checking the house effects, you should also check the Karaka. Nobody mentioned this point. If you want to know whether this person has a chance to get progeny, you have to check both the house and Karaka. In case of both the house and significator are spoiled, it is not possible to get progeny. When both Karaka, when both the Karaka planet and the house are spoiled together, the respective effect of the house will not be delivered to the native. Please note this point, it is very important. The natural significator of the progeny, which is Jupiter, is spoiled by its position in 12th house to the ascendant and it is also in connection with Rahu and Ketu. Well, one of my students is giving me a point regarding the Lord of Mangalyasthana. I personally contradict the point regarding Lord of Mangalyasthana. I don't agree with this concept. I hope you would have noticed that I had never used the term Lord of Mangalyasthana in my videos. Those who follow me regularly definitely know this. This is the century where, where the women lived together with a man even before getting married. As a consequence, I don't consider the concept of Mangalyasthana. This generation of women is unlike the last generation of women. Unlike the women of last generation, this generation of women are heading towards a different lifestyle. There is a lot of divorces these days. Before 30 years, all let me even take the generation of my mother. If I would have mentioned a word to my mother that why don't she divorce her husband or why should she bear all the troubles given by her husband rather divorcing, imagine the worst situation I would have faced. She would have definitely beaten me black and blue. If I had mentioned a single word divorce to my grandmother, she would have definitely reacted very badly. She would have plugged her ears to avoid hearing such inauspicious words from me. The past generation of women, no matter how worse their marital life is, they wanted to live with only one man they wanted to live with only one man throughout their life, get married only once. Living together with a man and experimenting the life before marriage was not possible in those days. The women also did not prefer it. But nowadays, divorces have become very common. If they do not like each other, they are okay to get divorced. It is quite a common procedure these days. You know how the next generation will be? A man and a woman will meet and they will come to an agreement like, let us live one year together. If we can understand each other mutually, possibly live together amicably, we can marry. If it is not okay, we will bid goodbye as friends and let us go in our own path. This is how a man and a woman will behave in the future. It will be very bitter to hear these sort of relationships, but you have to definitely understand that the next generation is heading towards such a process. Maybe the next generation will behave in such a fashion let me say after 30 years or 50 years. But this is definitely going to happen. These sort of experimenting the life with multiple partners is going to happen. Our own children might do in their future. Even I have children. I have a daughter and a son. Would my father had believed me if I had told him that there will be a lot of divorces in 30 years? He would have not definitely believed it. 
Would my grandfather have believed me? Not at all. And in today's world, 30% or 40% of the couples end up in divorce. Of course, it will be in an increasing manner. What is the reason? Women are financially independent. They started to study well. They are well educated now. They are earning their own money. They are not dependent on any man for their expenses. A woman will definitely be ready to throw the footwear which is not fitting her feet. Because they are standing on their own legs. When women are growing in a right way, it is very healthy for the society. But if it is the other way, it is not good for the society. Every living being is born out of Shakti. Though it sounds bitter for men, few men, women are superior indeed. The society keeps changing and the women also evolve. It is not possible for a man to give birth to child. Well, why do I say not to consider Mangalya Sana? Because Mangalya Sana is important only for the women, where the women treated their marital life as the lifelong commitment. While the women does not consider the marriage as a lifelong commitment, while the woman has a mindset to throw her husband out of her life when he does not meet her demands, the Mangalya Sana does not have its application. There are many women who does even remove their Mangal Sutra as it irritates them while they sleep. There is a lot of changes in the mindset of women. According to evolution of the women, we are not giving importance to Mangalya Sthana here. Well, one of my students is asking a question. It is about Nishbala of Venus. Venus gets Digbala that is directional strength in the 4th house. In this natal chart, Venus resides in the 10th house which is quite opposite to the Digbala house. 4th house is the Digbala house for Venus and the right opposite house that is 10th house is exactly the Nishbala house. Venus is residing in the 10th house in this natal chart. If Venus resides in 7th house, it is like in mediocre strength. And once it crosses Nishbala house, it starts to gain strength gradually. In the 4th house, at the midpoint of the 4th house, Venus gets its complete directional strength. And straight opposite to that, in the 10th house, it completely loses its directional strength. Once it crosses the Nishbala house, it commences to gain energy gradually. The directional strength is a very significant concept for natural malefic and the second level of significance is for natural benefits. This was not mentioned indeed in the original dictum. I share this knowledge completely from my research. When a malefic planet is not exalted or when it is not in the own house, rather it gets directional strength. Even if it is getting debilitated, it is a form of yoga. I have written about this in my articles. It is a higher level of perception of astrology. I have written even in my books. Please read it. I have written a lot about the directional strength of the malefic planets in my book. Well, is there any questions related to this natal chart? Shall we go to the next chart? Good. This is the natal chart of a male. I have just explained the natal chart of a female and this is the natal chart of a male who was born on 14th April 1968. I will tell you why I have displayed this natal chart. He did not get married yet. Can you please tell me the reason why he did not get married until this age? Well, I received some answers from my students. Oh, this student told me an answer. So please get up and tell me your answer. Well, this student definitely deserves an applause for a minute for the answer he told. Please clap your hands for a minute at least. 
So you have understood the concepts of astrology very well. The first and foremost important point was exactly told by him. I chose this natal chart to display as an example to explain the point that the student told me now. I feel very glad to hear such an answer from my follower, from my student. Why marriage is denied to this natal? What is the reason? The ascendant Lord has lost its strength. I want to explain all the possible natal charts which are unique. This natal has got limbs, hands, everything, but he has no head. This is the reason he could not get married. The ascendant Lord lost its strength. Indeed, the ascendant Lord got Michabanga because it is in conjunction with the exalted planet. Correct? No, it seems so. But it is not the truth. What is the concept of Nichabanga? Nichabanga or cancellation of debility is nothing but a planet which has lost its light energy, borrows light energy from another planet. Well, what you have to check here is the status of the exalted planet. It is in conjunction with the shadowy planet Rahu. Venus, which is supposed to cancel the debilitation of the Mercury, is in conjunction with Rahu and thus losing its own light energy. Let me explain this with a real-time example. Imagine there are three persons A, B and C. C is supposed to get some money from B. But person A smashed person B and B could not get up and give money to C and help C. This is what happening in this natal chart. The planet which really wants to cancel the debilitation of Mercury itself is affected by the conjunction of Rahu. I hope you can understand why Ascendant Lord could not get proper cancellation of debility. Or indeed, the debility is not cancelled at all. Venus, which is an exalted planet, is in conjunction with the shadowy planet Rahu and it is also in conjunction with Saturn. This is where a gap arises between the theory of astrological concepts and practicals. As per theory of astrology, when a debilitated planet is in conjunction with exalted planet, it gets cancellation of debility that is Nichabanga. If you know just the theory, you will predict this chart as the ascended lord got Nichabanga. Let us come to the practical dimension. What is Nichabanga? A planet which has lost its light energy, borrows light energy from another exalted planet which is supposed to have the light energy. Because exaltation means it has the highest strength. On an overview in this natal chart, it will seem like Mercury has got excellent cancellation of debility. You might wonder why I say that Ascendant Lord is weak in this natal chart. The significant point that you have to check is that the planet which is supposed to give light energy to cancel the debilitation of a debilitated planet should first of all have light energy. This student told this point as the very first point which I really really appreciate. If the Ascendant Lord is weak, a person cannot enjoy anything in the world. What a person is supposed to enjoy in this life? Marital life and children. Why do I highlight these two points? Because everybody who is right now sitting in this hall has enough food. We all eat thrice a day. It is not a challenge for most of the people to get fulfilled the very basic need, food and shelter. 
Are we here? Have we taken birth just for eating? Our motivation in life is not just having good food thrice a day. Rather, our motivation is to grow the next generation and we would expect the society to treat us well. We should live a life where others treat us with dignity. This is what our expectation is. When I say that we should live a life that others should respect, it means that we have to get married. We don't get married, nobody will respect us. This society will treat us as immature people. Well, one of my students is asking me a question that so far we have considered related to ascendant and not Rashi. Well, I leave this to you. You say that as per traditional astrology, we should consider both ascendant and Rashi. We have to give importance to Rashi as well. Of course, it is correct. You have to check and go ahead. Now tell me how the seventh position to the Rashi is. The Lord of the seventh house, Venus, is in conjunction with Rahu and Saturn. You should have realized this point before asking to check. It is indeed obvious. Definitely in a natal chart you have to consider both Rashi and Ascendant. Is there any Subhatva in the 7th house to the Ascendant? Is Jupiter aspecting this house? You don't need to go in circles and circles. Whatever points I explain in my video were tested several times by me. I can definitely pinpoint the reasons that are agreed by everybody. Just now one of the students asked me that we have to check Rashi as well. What is the next step? I asked you to check the strength of the 7th house lord to the Rashi. You cannot just call that Venus is exalted which is the 7th house lord to Rashi because Venus here is in conjunction with the shadowy planet Rahu and Saturn as well. Well, you might have a confusion about one point. Jupiter, which is the 7th house lord to the ascendant, is aspecting the 7th house by its swift aspect. You might wonder why, though 7th house to the ascendant is good, the native could not get married. This is the reason I first of all said that ascendant lord itself is weak in the natal chart. If ascendant lord is weak in a natal chart, the native himself will have no interest in life or despite making several efforts, the native will fail. This is another subject and let us not get into that. I really appreciate the student who at very first chance itself told the correct answer for which I displayed this natal chart. Do you have any questions? Sometimes the natal chart will look strong on an overview. But definitely you have to check all the concepts. If you understand the concepts of light energy, subhatva, you will definitely understand whatever I say. You can definitely follow my theory. Is there any other doubt? Shall we see the next natal chart? Well, one of my students is asking whether we have to check Navamsha. Yes sir, definitely while making predictions, you have to check Navamsha. Sir, I have given you the sheets with both Rashi and Navamsha and please take a look at it. For this natal chart in Navamsha as well, the planets are not in good strength. Do you guys have any more doubts? Shall I display the next natal chart? Well, let us go to the next natal chart. Most of the clients will approach an astrologer to know when the marriage will happen or whether it will happen. This is the reason I chose these natal charts. Most of the clients will approach an astrologer to know when the marriage will happen or whether it will happen. This is the reason I chose these natal charts to teach you. One among thousand or one lakh people will approach an astrologer to know whether marriage will happen or not. The rest will approach an astrologer to know when the marriage will happen. As for the last natal chart, one student responded 
at the very first chance itself the exact answer, the exact reason. I am expecting such a response for this needle chart as well which I am going to display. He was born on February 27, 1962. This is the natal chart of a male who is in his 50s. Can you tell me why this native of Cancer Ascendant did not get married yet? Yes, you guys are correct. Since the Ascendant Lord is debilitated, he did not get married until till date. He's 56 years old. Well, some of my students are giving me excellent answers. I'm really proud of it. In today's session, I'm getting better answers than yesterday. Of course, these answers are excellent. I'm really, really glad. I can understand that you have been watching my videos a lot and you all come up with correct predictions. Maybe the beginners have challenges understanding these concepts. Because a strong foundation is needed to understand the concepts which are higher. Anyway, if the foundation is strong, it is going to help you in the future. There is one more point that you have to identify why this person did not get married so far. Mm, some say Venus is in 8th house to the ascendant. Many people come up with different answers. No, I'm expecting the closest point that denied marriage to this native so far. One important point is this native have not experienced so far any dasha or functional benefits. The dasha and antar dasha are very very important. If this person had ever experienced a yoga dasha, it would have changed the situation. Please tell me which planets dasha that this person should experience. Well, the students are saying Sun, Moon, Mars, Venus. One is saying Venus. Who told the answer as Venus? No, it is not correct. The native will benefit from the dasha of Sun, Moon and Mars. What is the Janma nakshatra of this native? It is Anusham, that is Anuradha Nakshatra. When he was born, the remaining Dasha period was sat in 5 years. He underwent the Dasha of Lord of 8th house. Then came Dasha of Mercury, Ketu and Venus. Until he was less than 50 years of age, he underwent Dasha of Venus. One of you guys told me that Venus was combusted here by the sun. These are secondary points. I will touch on one particular point which is very important that denied the marriage. A person gets married in order to get a permanent marital pleasure from a woman. Marriage is meant for it. In order to get bed pleasures permanently, a man gets married. It is not about getting irregularly. It does not need a marriage. This is a very sensitive point. Marriage is meant for a couple where the couples get a permanent marital pressure. A man will be able to get permanent marital pressure only from the wife. With other women, a man will not be able to get permanent marital pressure. The point what we are talking about now is permanent marital pleasure. Venus is the significator of marital pleasure. Based on the status of Venus, you can understand whether the native is permanently getting marital pleasure from wife or not. And let me share an experience with my client. Three people came together bringing their friend. He was around 50 or 52 years old at that time. I haven't got his needle chart with me. All the friends belong to the same age group. They told me that their friend is very well settled, has got a lot of money, has all luxuries in his life. He has good business, dignity in society, everything in life. But he could not get married at all. 
His friends said that they have tried a lot and their own children are going to their college but their friends could not still get married. The person had no physical problems. He's such a smart guy, little bald. He has a lot of money, dignity in society, a good guy, but he couldn't get married at all. All his three friends were keen to know the destiny of their friend. After looking at the natal chart, I ensure that they will not mistake me asking such a question towards them. After they signaled yes, and the friends told that they approached me to find out the truth, I told them that the guy would have ever in his life experienced the pleasure of being with a woman, and he has absolutely no idea about women. the client burst into tears immediately that is the level of confidence i have on my predictions they were just dumbfound i just said one point that he never experienced the pleasure of a woman he agreed that he had a lot of money he had all the chances but he had never experienced the pleasure of a woman until that particular age He said that he also wondered why he couldn't get such a pleasure at all in his life. There is a difference here. Not getting married is a different point and not getting married without any experience of physical intimacy is another point. There are many men who though they did not get married at all they would have enjoyed certain pleasures from women even at the teenage 90% of the men in the society or so only 10% or exceptions this is a male dominated society and men behave so on the contrary 90% of the women are pure until they get married and only 10% of the women get physical intimacy with men before marriage this is the way our society works as per the strength of venus a man will get pleasure from a woman variably i can show many men as proof for this do you understand this it will be very obvious in this natal chart marriage is secondary point but when venus is totally weak a man will not definitely know the pleasure of a woman this guy told me that though he tried really hard he never got the pleasure of a woman did you understand this natal chart the dasha and antar dasha also did not support this natal because when venus dasha or antar dasha is happening first of all it will give you a woman to you First of all a planet will deliver jiva karaka and then it will deliver jata karaka I have written about this in many of my articles These are certain points that I composed based on the experience of predicting many natal charts What is jiva karaka signified by Venus It is the woman Venus cannot give a mother to you because already you came from a mother A woman is always around a man in different forms. We are surrounded by our mother, then our sisters, then a wife comes. Then there are many friends around us and finally we have daughters. So women are always around a man playing different roles. A friend or wife is delivered by Venus. Specifically, it gives a wife to a man or it gives a friend to a man. it gives a wife to a man by which she can enjoy the marital pleasures a planet will deliver first of all jiva karaka and then only it delivers jata karaka what is jata karaka it is pleasures having said this when the planet is totally losing its strength a man will not get the jiva karaka based on the strength of the planet they are proportionate and one more point you have to note here jupiter and venus should not be in conjunction this is the point i repeat often in my videos nobody else 
has introduced this concept. It is me who introduced this concept to the world. It may sound egoistic when I claim that I am the person who introduced this concept first to everybody. When I found this point 100% valid in the natal charts and when I shared my knowledge to others 5 years ago, I was criticized by many, many people. And now there is no criticism because those who had criticized me would have definitely tested this point in the natal charts and they too have realized what I said is true. When Venus and Jupiter are in conjunction, when the two natural benefits which have contrasting characters are in conjunction, both will get into a tug of war where there is neither failure nor victory. But the place where the conjunction happens will be spoiled. Is it correct? Imagine two people who have equal strength, who are fighting with each other. What will happen? Venus is the planet that gives marital pleasure and Jupiter is the planet that gives children. Venus will prevent Jupiter from giving children to the natal. On the other hand, Jupiter will prevent Venus from giving marital pleasure to the person. You have to definitely check the degrees of conjunction between these two planets and in which house this conjunction happens. This shortcoming will not happen not only by conjunction, it will also happen if there is an aspect to each other. Well, I have displayed few natal charts which had a unique point as a reason to find why marriage did not happen or why the marriage was delayed to the natal. Is there any doubts? Shall we go to another natal chart? Alright. This is the natal chart of a male. Now tell me, from this natal chart, what is the reason you find that this person has not got married it? Yes, my student is telling the right answer. The Venus and Jupiter connection will actuate Putra Dosha. You can see Venus is the Lord of the 5th house. It is in 12th house to the Ascendant. Here you should not make prediction based on the concept that 5th house Lord lost strength in 12th house to the Ascendant. What is the reason for this? Can anybody tell the reason? Yes, you guys are correct. Because Venus does not lose energy in the 12th house to the Ascendant. While you learn many rules in astrology, you have to learn the exceptions as well. Venus does not lose its energy either in 6th house or 12th house. This is where sometimes astrologers miss while making predictions. Indeed, Venus will gain more strength in the 12th house. For example, I can tell you a point in relation to the native of Libra Ascendant. For the Libra Ascendant, if Venus resides in the 12th house, in debilitation house Virgo, please don't judge like Venus lost its strength. You would have definitely noticed the natal of Libra Ascendant whose Venus reside in 12th house will not have got affected a lot. If you still find that their life was spoiled during the dash of Venus, it will be because of the connection of other planets with Venus. Definitely there would be a connection of a malefic planet with Venus. Well, for the native of Gemini Ascendant, this is the next category. Venus will not lose its strength though it gets debilitated in Virgo. What is the reason? I repeat my question. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, when Venus resides in debilitation house, that is Virgo, it does not lose its strength. What is the reason? Yes, you are correct, sir. Because Venus gets Big Bala in the fourth house. When planet attains directional strength, it gains strength next to status of own house status. 
Therefore, for the native of Gemini ascendant as well, Venus does not lose its strength when it resides in the debilitation house Virgo. Thus, native of Gemini ascendant is special. For the native of Gemini ascendant, Venus is the lord of the fifth house. It is how the native of Gemini ascendants are blessed by Almighty. God has given us two kidneys. God has given many of the organs double. God has given so because even if one organ gets spoiled, we can manage with the other. Astrology is one such concept. There are always rules and the exceptions come as blessings sometimes. If there is no exception in astrology, how can a man live? A beggar also has a good marital life. A person who is physically challenged has a wonderful spouse. Trundling the wheelchair of her husband, helping him throughout his life. Though some people are chronically ill or physically challenged, they have a wonderful spouse. Or they have somebody else to support them throughout their life. And we can see some couples who both have physical disabilities or suffering from serious ailment support each other in their life very well. There are many people whose houses were just built nearly by tying four rags together. Everybody lives their life whether it is a house or rather a tent which is nothing but some sacks tied together or whether they are living in a posh house. You will definitely see that on the natal chart all the planets would have not definitely got spoiled. Well, for the native of Gemini ascendant, if Venus resides in Virgo and you judge it to be debilitated, it has completely lost strength, then you have not come to the higher level of astrology. Because Venus gets Digbala in the fourth house. In addition to this, if Venus is in Parivartan, then you have to definitely finalize like Venus has very good strength. According to this natal chart, the natal has Putra Dosha. If a person is not supposed to have children in their life, they will not have a legal marriage. What is a legal marriage? Marriage that happens legally, where the parents can claim their relationship, their children as theirs. In this natal chart, the lord of the 7th house residing in the 12th house to the ascendant. As per the concept, the 7th house lord resides in the 12th house to the ascendant. Let me give you a hint. Tomorrow is Amavasya. What will happen? You guys can try the answer. Yes, moon is going to completely lose its strength. The 5th house lord is in 12th house to the ascendant. And here you should not judge like Venus lost its strength in 12th house. Please remember it. However, as per Bhavat Bhavam, Venus, which is Lord of the Taurus, resides in 8th house to Taurus house. Venus is residing in Sagittarius and it is in 6-8 axis to Taurus. You have to understand this concept. The Lord of 5th house does not lose its strength because of its position in 12th house to the Ascendant. Rather, it is residing in 6-8 axis to the 5th house. And the Lord of 7th house, it is okay even to be a waning moon, but tomorrow is Amavasya and it is in 12th house to the Ascendant. Practically the next day, the planet moon is going to lose all its strength completely since the next day is Amavasya. The 5th house Lord is in conjunction with 7th house Lord in the 12th house to the Ascendant and Rahu resides in the 5th house. Now you can also see that the 12th house is receiving the aspect of Jupiter. What does this Jupiter deliver? This native has crossed 50 years of age and is undergoing Saturn Sade Sati. The Saturn Sade Sati did not affect his business. To make even more finest predictions, 
this native will get a lot of companionship of the women but he will not get a wife hope you understand this point this is a peculiar natal chart this native will not get married or the native himself will not be interested in getting married he might have a notion like to merely enjoy a beer bottle why should he purchase the entire wine shop this will be the mindset of the native is then that true i would like to insist one point here please note that i don't have drinking habit i am a person who insists very very strongly that an astrologer should never consume alcohol should never have the drinking habit a person who thinks about alcohol consumption cannot be a good astrologer an astrologer should not definitely give lame reasons that i'm just drinking a very little i just do only social drinking no no such reasons for the name sake they can remain as an astrologer if they do so and they can never become a complete astrologer because mind control is the most important quality that an astrologer should possess i really deserve to say that no astrologer should not have drinking habit please never have such an inclination even in your dreams it will divert you a lot well coming back to this natal chart this native has a severe putra dosha and this is the reason he did not get married until this age or he does not first of all have the inclination to get married you know why i took this natal chart i took this natal chart in order to explain this amavasya moon some of my students are asking some doubts let me explain it oh some does not agree why i call this moon as amavasya moon without considering the degrees of conjunction between sun and moon though it is not technically so my student is saying it is not amavasya it is just heading towards amavasya well this is the gap between theory and practicals so will you able to see the moon with good light energy based on this natal chart no this is the point the moment moon is 180 degree away from the sun it starts to wane this is a very basic lesson of astrology here in this natal chart moon gets 20 marks out of 120 marks because next day it is going to be amavasya is it pass mark for moon the original dictum says that sun moon are in quadrant to each other and in quadrant to the ascendant the person is considered to be fortunate but to make predictions practically you have to check the light energy of the moon first of all check the position of sun and moon it is a practical point as per theory the 7th house lord is in 12th house to ascendant here does the 7th house lord has light energy or not technically though it is not exactly amavasya you cannot deny that moon has no light energy well i told that this native will definitely get the companionship of women though he does not get married or though he did not marry so far how i told can anybody say the answer can anybody tell me the reason well you are correct sir this native will get the companionship of the women because of the jupiter aspect so here the moon which is heading towards amavasya is gaining certain energy certain strength because of the aspect of jupiter but this companion will not be a legal wife and in a different way he will get it this is the truth indeed and we don't need to go further regarding this as it is like a personal space of him the 7th house lord as per the theory is in the 12th house to the ascendant and it is in conjunction with venus and receives the aspect of jupiter what will happen as a consequence of this conjunction and aspect he cannot get children 
he will get companionship of women they will be in living together relationship he will not marry legally anybody if only he ties mangal sutra he has the rights to claim the child born as his here there is no possibility of getting a child this native might think like why should i get a child after 50 years of age yesterday a client was repeatedly asking me whether he will have children or not i told him definitely he has children according to his natal chart he also asked a question repeatedly regarding the longevity the client said to me guruji please don't mistake me you told that i will get a child at 55 years of age i really want to live long in order to support my child which is going to be born so please tell me whether i will live long how long i will live because i have to grow the child if only i live until 75 years of age if only i will be alive until that number of years i can support my son or daughter whoever it is i consider your words as a blessing from the god i totally believe that i will get a child since you told that i will get a child but if only i live at least 70 years of age i can grow my child to a certain age this is the reason i ask about longevity of my life it is a correct point correct the native is 53 years old let us come back to this natal chart this native might have lost strength in getting a child or will not be interested at all in getting a child since this person does not have the possibility of progeny he did not get married still is there any other doubt you have well i have displayed four natal charts so far each had a unique reason for why the marriage was denied for so long in one natal chart we saw the person will not get married and he he would not be aware of the pleasure of a woman at all in another natal chart we saw the person will not get marry but he will get companionship of the women and in one chart we saw the ascendant lord was very weak and so the native could not get marry so each chart explained a unique reason if you have still doubts you write it in the comment section of this video in my next video i'll come up with explaining an important concept of astrology keep writing your feedback to astro.writers@gmail.com Thank you.